we will look at is the first one we spoke about working on yourself. The second one that we're going to talk about is the working on time. And like I mentioned, financial goals take time to achieve. It doesn't, it's not fast. It's not something that happens tomorrow. It takes time for, for you to achieve your financial goal. So give yourself the time and the space um, for you to be able to achieve that, that goal. Okay. So when you think about time, there's, there's two aspects to time. So he actually, sorry. And it's possibly what um, attracted you to this. And each of them takes time for you to be able to achieve. So when you think about managing your expenses and creating savings, it's something that takes a lot of time for you to achieve. And it's not very easy for you to, to do it if you don't give yourself the time. Okay. So expenses can be divided up into two places. Um, number one, we have fixed expenses. And secondly, we have variable expenses. So fixed expenses are the ones that occur regularly. Uh, they could be weekly, could be monthly, could be annually. The amounts don't usually change. So if you think about, for example, rent, um, it, it remains consistently the same. If it changes, it only changes maybe once a year, once every couple of years. And same thing with like, if you have a loan, if you have any car payments, um, if you have any other bills that usually are consistent, these are what are called fixed expenses. Then variable expenses are the ones that do not occur regularly and the amounts could change um, according to, to the need or, um, or choices that you make. So these include things like clothes, gifts, um, money you spend on vacations and things like that. So it's important for us to be very careful about when, for us to understand the expenses, number one. And then secondly, for us to make sure that we are not um, spending too much in terms of um, the expenses. And just to give you a few more examples. So fixed expenses could be rent, could be loans, could be uh, mortgages, could be your car insurance could be school fees, could be water, could be electricity, all those could be your fixed expenses. And then on the right hand side, we have what are your variable expenses. So we have the money you spend on clothes, on gifts. We have um, black tax um, and I'll explain what that is. We have money you spend in the salon or in the spa to treat yourself. And we have things like DSTV because that could be a choice uh, in terms of it being a need versus a want. So black tax, just to explain what that means. So black tax, usually it's, it's a term that's coined to mean the, the fact that as, as um, Africans, we usually have a burden to make sure that our siblings are, um, are well educated. And usually if you're the eldest one, um, then you know, our parents somehow um, along the way believe that if, if you educate the eldest ones, then you can take the time to for them to then educate the rest um, as things go by. So that's what black tax is. And it's, it's usually a burden on the elder uh, or the people who are blessed in their family. And it, a lot of times you can think about it as a variable expense because you don't know when it's going to come. You don't know um, what it's going to cost you. And at the same time, you, need, you can make a decision whether to spend in it or not. So when, when, after looking at those two different types of, of uh, budgets, so it's important for us to plan for where our money should go and not necessarily wondering where it went. So very simple principle that we should use is to divide up our, um, our expenses into two bits. So there's a famous saying that says, pay yourself first. So put uh, money aside for your savings and at the minimum, this should be 10% of how much you earn that you put aside for savings. And then everything else can be 90%. So of course here we don't break down on what rent should be versus what your clothing budget should be, but just kind of work with this rough, uh, simple example for you to know, sorry, how much to spend in savings and how much to spend on everything else. So to achieve this, there's a few things that I would advise. So number one is make sure you allocate money for necessities. And the key thing here is that you need to separate needs and wants. So needs could be, you know, that you need to have a roof over your head, you need to have food, you need to have, um, um, I mean, and many other things. But then wants could be, I want to live, live in a certain area versus another one. So can you afford to live in that area versus live in a cheaper area? And that's where you can differentiate a need versus a want. 
Then thirdly, is to put your plan into action and to follow it through. It's important for us, once you do decide what your budget will look like, then you need to follow it and um, make sure that you put it into action. Otherwise, it beats the whole purpose if you do put together a budget and not necessarily follow it through. Then thirdly, um, sorry, fourthly, it's to plan for seasonal expenses. So seasonal expenses could be like school fees. It occurs once every three months. So you need to divide, if your school fees is 30,000 shillings for your child or for your, for your campus or for, for, for your further education, and you pay that for yourself, then you need to divide it by how long you have to save. So for in the example of school fees, you could decide to say it's 30,000. So if I divide it by a term is three months, so I need to save 10 a month. So you just put aside in your monthly budget, 10,000 shillings every month. And it's a much easier load than saying every three months, I will figure out where to find 30,000. That's why we find banks making a lot of money from instant loan, from school fees loans, because people don't plan for these seasonal expenses. And it's very easy for you to just to look at how long you have to save for it and divide it up. And do it for other seasonal expenses, like your, your, if you have a car, like your insurance, if you have any other seasonal expenses that occur once. A good example is December is usually a big month and you always hear the joke around people saying January because you know you spend a lot in December. So why not make a plan for December? If you know December, you will spend a lot. You know you need to, to spend some time with your family, spend some time with your friends, then plan for it. If, I'm sure if you, if you can be able to put aside money every month for your December expenses, it will be much easier than waiting for December to happen and then finding whether it's 10 or 20 or whatever the number of thousand shillings that you need to put aside for your December expenses. Then lastly, it's use financial instruments kept cleverly. And here, um, I'll give you an example in more detail um, as we continue, but make sure to use those financial instruments. Um, for example, you could have a money market account, you could have a savings account. There is also simple things like I'm sure you who have a I think it's a lock account or something where you can put money aside and not necessarily be able to access it until a certain period of time. So use such financial instruments um, and they will enable you to be able to achieve your goal. So a good question is somebody could be saying, so I have obligations right now and I can't be able to put aside 10% of my, of my money aside today. So what should you do in that case? It's very simple, make a plan. So Start with whatever amount you can be able to put aside today. It could be 1,000 shillings, it could be 500 shillings. Start with that amount and start putting aside today. Then secondly, increase it, um, the amount that you put aside as you clear your obligations. So say for example, you have a loan that, that you're servicing, a bank loan or a mobile loan that you pay. So when you clear a loan, rather than, and that loan say was 5,000 shillings, Rather than saying this 5,000 shillings is now money that I can go uh, drinking or I can spoil myself with new shoes every month, then find a way to say, okay, instead of spending 5,000 shillings on new shoes every month, I will spend two on new shoes and I will put aside 3,000 shillings for me to start my savings goal. Or even when you get more income, your employer gives you an extra 2,000 shillings in your salary, 10, whatever the amount. As you get that extra income, work towards achieving that 10% goal. And like I said, achieving the goal is a matter of time. So you need to build that plan and see it through. And even if, if you work in a job that you get bonuses, you get commissions, you get windfalls, usually people see those as holiday money, as uh, I'll treat my friends because I didn't expect this money. But the real way to actually look at it and the more practical way for you to approach it is you can decide to divide it up and say, okay, I will reward myself because I did get this bonus out of the hard work that I put in. So maybe I will decide to save 70% of my bonus or my commission and 30% I will, I will uh, spoil myself with a holiday, with a treat, with whatever it is that you, that you do, but make sure that you put the biggest chunk of it towards um, a savings and it will help you to achieve that 10% goal.